Hey guys, today we are going to go over how pros get into bomb sites. So you've watched my how to dominate T side video and you've done your default. You've done stage one, you've done stage two, and now you're up to stage three. All your boys are grouped up outside the bomb site and you've got to figure out how to get from outside to inside that bomb site. To do that, we're going to go over three simple techniques that pros use and mix and match together. And then we're going to go over one simple trick that ties them all together and makes them work. Well, actually, we'll start with that. So that's called the action point. In any of these strategies, in a pop, a contact, or an execute, there is one moment in time at which your whole team must become active. They must now start contributing to the hit of the bomb site and, and no longer be baiting whether that's entering, trading, or throwing supporting util, whatever it is, as that action point goes, everyone becomes active. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with an execute. And these three strats are a common terminology that you add to your list, that everyone knows what they mean, is very clearly defined, and your leader can call at any given time, and you all know what to do. So we'll start with an execute. I think executes often get confused with pops. Um, people have heard both used kind of interchangeably, so the definition has gotten a little bit lost. But the idea behind an execute is it's a slower hit with a lot of utility, right? So as you can see here, Team Liquid versus VP, we've got VP, five men in banana, getting ready to execute the B-bomb site. When you're hitting the B-bomb site, the point of an execute is to divide the site, molly it out, and then flash your way in. It's a slower hit. When is the action point going to be? The action point is going to be the flash that's at the end of the hit. So what we're going to see here from VP is a smoke here, a smoke here, Molly's at the back of the site, and then entry flashes that come in, and then, then everyone will start rolling in and fighting. That action point is the entry flash. And this is, this is super standard. I think this is the one that everyone learns first. Let's have a look at this liquid versus VP example on how it's going to work. As you see, all the VP are lined up. They're getting into their position. They start throwing the smokes, and the smokes are landing CT and coffin. Now we're going to see the mollies come over. Become the mollies and then the flashes. And all these players start running into the bomb site as that flash goes in. Did you see that action point of that flash was when everybody ran in? That is a very simple execute, but that's the concept. And remember this. Divide like separate the angles that you want to fight. So smoke, smoke, molly out the corners that are going to be hard for you to clear. In this execute, we saw a molly here and we saw a molly here. Then the flashbang goes out and that's the action point. As the flashbang goes, everyone must be active and then VP all start running into the bomb site. That is the basis of an execute. Now, when is an execute strong? Because for each of these different strategies, you're going to use at different times, right? And execute is strong when you have a very clear utility advantage against the enemy, right? In this round, VP knew that the liquid players on the B bomb site didn't have much utility left. Because if they have utility left, then as that, that slow sort of systematic execute comes out, they're going to drop counter utility. They're going to smoke the choke. They're going to drop molotovs. They're going to use their own utility to slow down or even stop the execute. So the execute is only really good when you know that the other team is really low on utility or you know that they don't really have a way to counter it with what they've got. It's important to understand that there's no surprise factor in an execute. An execute, you basically announce that you're coming. You announce that your force is superior, and then you just, you just overpower them. There's no surprise at all. When do we need a surprise? 
when the other team has the counter utility to defend against you, and that's when we use a pop. So we're going to move into the second strategy now. So here, later in the same game, we have Liquid now on the T side, all grouped up in Banana. If you have a look at their utility here, they have no Molotovs left. They've got two flashes. They've got a lot of smokes, which could help them get in, but they don't really have the required utility to do a full execute. Same sort of idea from VP. Look at VP's utility. They've got smokes. They've got mollies. They've got all the counter util that they could possibly need to defend this B-bomb site. So Liquid's plan here can't be a full execute. It can't be execute. So they go, okay, let's try and get the element of surprise. Let's try and pop on VP. Now, what is the purpose? What is the idea of a pop? A pop is the first thing that happens is going to be the action point. So the flashbang, there's going to be one flash and on that flash, everyone becomes active. So there's not gonna be that bit, all those smokes over the top, all the Molotovs come in, it's just gonna be bang and we're in. And if it catches the other team off guard, it can be a really clean way to get into a bomb site when you don't really have the utility to do so. It's a surprise strat. Sometimes though, if it doesn't catch them off guard, you can just be going into the slaughterhouse. So let's see how Lick would do it here, right? As you can see, we've got Stewie and Grim entering. Grim's got his smoke primed. Flush goes out, bang, and they're all in. See how Grim smoked CT on the run there? Now, they get completely sprayed down. It does not work. VP are not caught off guard by this strategy at all. But you can see the idea there is that Grim is not throwing his smoke from back here or anything like that. He's lining up to entry. The flash comes over the top. As the flash hits, Grim swings wide, smokes CT, and they're all just running in. It is a really fast, quick strategy with that action point being that flashbang being the first thing that happens. So those that distinction between an execute and a pop is really important because an execute, slow, systematic, molly them out, Flash your way in, no surprise. Pop, fast, one flashbang, which is the action point. Smoke on the run, everybody just in. Surprise them, get in as quick as possible. Good for low utility, but can be disastrous if the other team isn't surprised. Now, the final idea that we're going to uh, work with is contact, which is used for when you've got a little bit even less utility. It's used for trying to catch the uh, the ultimate surprise strategy, people just walking out dry. And I'll show you how that's going to work. Right, so now we've got VP. We've gone back a little bit in the game to the uh, T side of VP. And as you can see, we've got your Kinder and Sanji in apps. We've got Jame and Kaiko top mid and Buster at the back with the bomb. Now, they believe, I, I think, that they've got some sort of timing that they are going to catch Liquid off guard. So they do have the utility to flash Yakinda and Sanji out apps here, but instead what they're going to do is let Yakinda and Sanji walk out and take dry duels. Now, in a contact play, when is the action point? It is when the first player takes contact. As soon as Yakinda takes contact here, you're going to see these supporting players start to throw their utility, then come up dig. You're going to see Sanji behind him getting out there and trying to trade and being active. And everything sort of explodes on that contact. It's important to understand about the action point. Before the action point, you're always very quiet. After the action point, that's when you start making all that sound. So it's it's like this idea of we're quiet, we're quiet, we're not telling them where we are, we're not telling them what we're doing, and then action point, bang, now we explode. Now everybody's here and everybody's throwing flashbangs, we're fighting, we're running in, we're entering, we're doing all that. It's that dichotomy of before, sneaky, after, boom. And it's so important to get that action point correct. Now let's look how VP do it. He's sneaking out, sneaking out. There's no sound anywhere. He's trying to find the duel, takes the contact, and he goes. Now, he's just running out, 
and he, he dies. Fallen dies as well, but you can see these players. See how they're now hard running up dig. Buster tried to come out apps and trade as well. These guys are still trying to trade and everything is active. You can see the moment that that action point goes into play. Silent, 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 bang. Okay, guys, get in there, get in there. And they get the bomb site. It wasn't as clean as they would have liked, especially considering they got the entry frag. However, it did turn out well in the end because if you are practicing good theory and you are, you are doing things correctly, then everything just seems easy. And even, even if things don't go your way initially, you can still recover it because you're, you're following that theory, which puts you in positions that allows you to do that. Now, those are the three simple ideas. The, the contact, pop, and execute. You have to get those down. Do pros do those all the time? No, they don't. Sometimes it's a, a little bit more brawly. Sometimes they just roll and get kills and roll into bomb sites. But other times, and depending on the bomb site and the map, you have to combine these together to make it work. So we're going to go to Overpass and watch Navi now. And I'm going to show you how they mix and mash some of these strategies to get into bomb sites. Now, when I said Navi, I obviously meant Gambit playing against Navi, which is what we've got here, and we're on Overpass. Now, Overpass is a pretty difficult map. As a terrorist, there is a lot of space to take. There's a lot of long angles that you have to deal with, and you don't necessarily have enough utility to deal with all of it. For example, here we have Gambit trying to get on the B bomb site, right? They are grouped up outside Monster and we've got Nafani over here. He's not involved in this play. What we're about to see Gambit do is mix a contact and a pop. So they have to clear all this area, get to this spot here next to wood, and then they're going to pop onto the B bomb site. It's this mixture of, of contact and if they were to take contact, you know, with players here or something, they would all they would all just explode. But because they don't, they are then able to pop onto the bomb site. So let's have a look how this goes. Axile is the entry here. He's contacting out. He sees nothing. And we're going to see how close he gets here. They all group up. Behind him, he's got the boys. They all group up. Flashbang goes out. Pop. Action point. They explode. Now they're out onto the bomb site. Now, Navi were actually playing very defensively on B here. So as you can see, they're able to get very deep before they, they fight any players. So they take the bomb site pretty cleanly, but you can very clearly see the segmented ideas that Gambit have there. As they're coming through Monster and getting clearing all this area, it's a contact. There's no utility. They're all going together. They're going to explode on the contact. They achieve their goal their initial goal of taking this, this area. So they get here, Axel waits here, the flush comes out over the top, pops here, bang, they pop onto the bomb site. Because that bomb site's so difficult, you need to combine those two ideas to actually be able to get onto it. Now, I hope you guys can take those three strategies back to your teams, back to your practices, and just learn those basic ideas, learn those patterns, add the words pop, contact, and execute, and action point to your common terminology page. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the common terminology video that I did. And you can get good at using those strategies. And then eventually you'll be able to copy Gambit and all the pro teams in the way that they do more advanced strategies by combining the different ideas and making them work. All right. That's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope that has really improved the stage three of your defaults. I hope you've really taken away the importance of that action point to disguise what you're doing by being quiet before it and then exploding after it so your whole team is attacking at one time using that idea. That's all I got. I hope you have a fantastic uh, day, guys, and I will see you in the next one.